In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings of peace and joy, dear brothers and sisters. The Gospel passage for the fifth Sunday of the Lent begins with a request made by the Greeks. Sir, we wish to see Jesus. We wish to see Jesus. It is always a praiseworthy desire. Maybe as we reflect through this Sunday Gospel, may we also have a glimpse of Jesus, the person of Jesus. And let this be a wish that is always be there in our hearts every day of our life. We wish to see Jesus. That request gave Jesus an opportunity to speak about his passion and death. Listen to what the Lord says, John chapter 12, verse 23. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. When they said we wish to see Jesus, his reply is this, the hour has come. Now turn your pages back, go back into the Gospel of St. John. We read in the, at the wedding at Cana, John chapter 2 verse 4, Jesus said to his blessed mother, my hour has not come. Gospel of St. John chapter 7 verse 4, at the Feast of Tabernacle, Jesus again said, my hour has not come. Gospel of St. John chapter 8 verse 20, at the temple when they wanted to arrest him, it is written there, his hour has not come yet. But when it comes to John chapter 12 verse 23, the Lord says, my hour has come. The hour has come. Then the Lord says, the hour has come for the hour for glorification. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. So the question is, what is the hour? What is the glorification? And Jesus answers that question through a metaphor, through a word picture. Listen, John chapter 12, verse 24. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you. Now, that is something very important that we notice. Truly, truly is Jesus is telling, Amen, Amen, I say to you. It is, I am telling you something of very importance. I am telling you something which is incredibly important. Listen to me, the Lord says. Pay attention to what the Lord is telling. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Obviously, Jesus is not teaching an agricultural lesson to the farmers. But he is giving all of us, his disciples, a principle of kingdom. A kingdom principle he is teaching us. Let us look at this metaphor the Lord is teaching us. A grain of wheat. Now what is a grain of wheat? It contains life in it. It has immense potencies. But then if it is kept in the barn, if it is kept in the safe place, it will just remain a single. It has to be thrown into the dirty mud. It has to die. It has to be decomposed. Then the life in it will germinate. There will be a sprout. There will be a plant. And slowly, gradually, it will give life. My sisters and brothers, we know Jesus was speaking about what was going to happen in his life. Jesus is telling what he is about to do, what he is about to go through. He is telling his readiness to be thrown onto the cross, to be nailed onto the cross, to die on the cross. We know a seed can just remain as a single seed, single seed. But when it dies, it gives life. So the Lord says, his readiness to die. He says, I am ready to die so that you may have life and life in abundance. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. The Lord says, I don't want to remain alone. I am ready to die so that I can give life. And he, through his life, has, through his death, has given all of his life John 10.10, 10, he said, I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. 
the grain died on the cross so that we may have life and life in abundance. He goes on to say, John 12, 25, He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. The Lord is teaching something paradoxical. He says this kingdom principle, when we love our life, we will lose it. But when we hate our life, that word hate has to be understood in the sense Jesus meant love God, seek the kingdom of God more than everything else in this world. When we choose God and ready to die to ourselves, the Lord says we produce fruits and the greatest fruit we will get eternal life. My dear sisters and brothers, the Lord is teaching all of us a kingdom principle of surrender, sacrifice and dying to oneself. I think of a small event in my life journey. Five years back, I was working with Shalom Gospel Channel in Kerala. That was a place which I loved. That was in a way my comfort zone. I loved the place. I loved the people with whom I worked. I loved the ministry and the mission of working in a media world. It was, let's say, a comfort zone where I was and I was happy and I thought that is my mission and ministry and my destiny to be there. And all of a sudden, unexpectedly, I got a transfer to this place, to Igatpuri Retreat House. Initially, when my provincial said that, I was sad, I was upset. It made me feel so, so angry, frustrated, felt bitter inside. I was unable to just let go the ministry and mission that I was doing. But then as religious, we have a vow of obedience and I said, yes, provincially, if you wish, I will move on. But then I was not happy inside. In one of those days, my one good companion, brother priest, he called me up. He knew what I was going through. And as we were having a, just a conversation over the phone, this brother priest, this friend priest told me, it is only when we die to our dreams, God's dreams will be fulfilled in our lives. It is only when we die to our dreams, God's dreams will be fulfilled in our lives. When I heard that from my brother priest, friend priest, I knew God spoke to me through him. I just realized my struggle was because I had my own dreams. When God gave me that grace through that brother priest, that inspiration and the grace that I received, yes, I finally came to this place where I am. And today when I look back, I see the mighty blessing that I myself have received in my life. I've seen the grace of God in my life more powerfully. I know this ministry last five years has changed me and I also have seen many, many blessings in this retreat house and even this little YouTube channel that we have today is all a blessing God has given. The Lord says, when we die to ourselves, there will be fruits and I believe all of us who have gone through that, we can all testify. Every parent will have a story of dying. Every ministry, every mission will have a story of dying. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. The Lord says, don't remain alone. When you die, when you surrender, when you sacrifice, you are giving life, you are producing fruits, and the Lord expects fruits from all of us. Now, what does it mean to die? The scripture gives us so many exhortations about dying to self. I wish to read a few passages, passages from the scripture later to the Romans chapter 6 verse 8. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. When we die with Christ, we will live with him. That word of God of Romans 6 8 tells us, if we die with Christ here on this earth, we have a life with Him. If only we die with Christ here, we can have life in Christ. 
St. Paul again says that in, in Galatians 2.20, it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. When we die to, to this world, to the flesh, to sin, we have life in Christ. The Word of God invites us to die to our flesh, die to the world, and die to sin. Listen to God's Word. Galatians 5.24 Galatians 5.24 and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we belong to Christ, we need to crucify our flesh with its passions and desires. Again, God's word tells in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. If we belong to Christ, we need to die to the world, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Third, die to sin. God's word in the letter to the Romans, chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. So, you also must consider yourself dead to sin, and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. My sisters and brothers, when we die to our flesh, when we die to the worldly desires, when we die to the sin, we are assured of life with Christ. Romans 6, 8 But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him. Let us die today so that we can avoid the second death that is eternally separated from the living God. Sisters and brothers, I conclude, the Lord is teaching all of us a principle today. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it gives life, it bears fruit, it will give life to others. Let us be people who die to ourselves so that we can give life to others and finally get that eternal life which the Lord has promised all of us. Amen. God bless you.